of the crowd that day at Jerry's home when the doctor shook his head and said she's gone oh you could feel that the matter was hopeless you could hear them cry that night that little girl was only 12 years old oh then somewhere in the distance 
distance out of line against the sun there came a man on a mission from the throne oh and then they said look somebody's coming but what they did not know it was a promise coming down that dusty road to mocking when Jesus did speak. He said, your daughter's not dead, she's just asleep. Then he turned to those unbelievers and he told them to all go home. That's when they heard him say, leave me in death alone. Well, then he laid his holy hands upon the child and he looked death right in the eye he said all power in heaven and earth is given to me and with a voice that sounds like thunder he hurled death asunder and then he said little girl turned to mocking when Jesus began to speak. He said, your daughter's not dead, she's only asleep. And then he turned to those unbelievers and he told them to all go home. That's when they heard him say, leave me in death alone. Well, hands upon that child and he looked death right in the eye and he said all power in heaven and earth is given to me and with a voice that sounds like thunder he hurled death asunder and then he said little girl rise and Church of God. It's good to have everyone here today. God gives us a wonderful day to be in his house. 
I was talking to the Lord this morning, praying, and said, Lord, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be to a nation that can come out and worship you openly. I was thinking how it must be for those people in Africa or China that have to go out and hide and try to worship the Lord on Sunday. How they have to keep from getting killed or don't know when somebody's going to walk in and go to shooting in the midst. We are a blessed people. And we ought to give God praise for it. It's good to have everyone here with us today. I believe we will. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer as we start today's service. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before thee again today, dear Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be in the house of God. We thank you for all you've done for us, dear Lord. You've blessed us throughout the week, dear Lord, by keeping us through another week, dear Lord. Lord, we ask you to go with us through this service today, dear Lord. Touch in a mighty way, dear Lord. Let the Holy Ghost come down and touch, dear Lord. Let it be another Pentecost, dear Lord, but be about an act, dear Lord. But you just never want, dear Lord, to see the Holy Ghost and the fire from heaven come down to be with us. I believe at this time I'll let our teachers take charge of the classes. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Go ahead and take the Sunday school off. <laughs> I'll sit in our room through the night. We'll be with the Lord after. <laughs> <laughs>
up today, you might say I've got troubles, but we need to rejoice and be glad in it. We woke up today. Give us another day. This time, we'll let our teachers take charge of the classes. Thank you, Lord. Then in the adult class, we'll be in Acts chapter 27. It's lesson number 11. It's in the Constitution. Out of the lessons, be good cheer in the storm. You know, we all go through storms in life sometimes. And the themes of the lesson today, if you got a lesson you can read it, it says storms come in every life. Sometimes we are of our own making, sometimes because of others. But there can be victory in the storm. You know, we all face storms. I don't care what some of these prosperity preachers on TV will tell you. You know, once you get saved, everything's going to be just fine. You're not going to have no troubles, no trials. Everything's going to be smooth. There's not going to be no bumps in the road. But all you got to do is pick up your Bible and read about them old saints of God. And you see, they faced a lot of bumps in the road, and they're a lot closer to God than we are. So that's what we're seeing today. Of course, Brother Paul, you know, God told Paul, Several lessons ago, was reading about how he was going to go to Rome. And Paul probably thought, just like a lot of us, things come up here. How am I going to do this? How, how am I going to get the money up for this? How, how, you know, i got to pay this passage on the ship. i got to live. You know, a lot of things go through our minds like that. But God was working in Paul's favor. Not only was Paul going to go to Rome, but they was going to pay for his passage there. So he's going to get that free trip to Rome. But it's not always free when we think things are going to be free. He had to pay a lot of cost on this. But in today's lesson, we see where Paul had been put on the ship to sail for Rome. Bad time of the year. Sometimes, you know, we don't know what's going to happen this time of the year. But in today's lesson, it starts at verse 9. It says, so when much time was passed, and when sailing was buried, was now dangerous, because it was the fast end of the fast already passed, Paul admonished them. So he, he seemed that, you know, this was the wrong time of the year to be out sailing upon the sea. It seemed like at this time of year the fast was ended. This is the fast of atonement. It ended around September 25th, our time. Well, you know, just like I do, even in our our area, the last of September up to about November, December, that's hurricane season. So these on the Mediterranean, at the same time, they seem to be having storms coming up in their life. It seems like it's a bad time to sail because you never knew what was going to happen. You know, I know the pastor was speaking the other day. He was talking about him and Sister Amy going on a cruise and how there's that storm out there on the water and how the ship was tossed and turned. Well, me and my wife used to go on a cruise every October. That was our anniversary. And it seems like every time we got on that ship in October, there was a storm somewhere, and that thing would rock left and right. And I could just only imagine that ship that Paul was on, because the one we was on, 900 foot long, and they had stabilizers to go out. Paul just had that wooden vessel that they was on, and they sat like a... I can only imagine how it was tossed and turned while they was on it. Some of you boys, Brother Charlie, Brother Bob, y'all been in the Navy on this ship. You know how you get out there in that storm. It don't matter how big that ship is. That storm's got control of that ship. Like a fair told me, you know, back here in was Hurricane Cindy. No, it wasn't Cindy, but one before that in England. Mississippi and everything was so tore up. He said the man that thinks they can control God hadn't been there and seen them eye beams twisted, how God turned them and t twisted and broke suns down. And he said, that's what here. They had these storms up, and they didn't know what was going on. They knew that they had no control over it. Paul was trying to tell them, you know, that we should not go at this time. Paul said unto him, sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with much hurt and much damage. 
not only to the laden and the ship and ship, but also to our life. Paul tried to warn them ahead of time. You know, they didn't want to listen to Paul, but Paul had that divine teaching. God had done spoke to Paul, told Paul where he was going. So Paul had his faith that God was going to take me because God told me he was going to take me to Rome. So I'm going to go to Rome. But he wanted to know that you, know, you sell this time of the year. We're going to have trouble. Said You're going to lose your ship. You're going to lose everything you got on it. He tried to tell the people, but they wouldn't listen. That's kind of the way it is today. People will not listen. The pastor gets up on Sunday morning and on Wednesday nights and tries to warn the people of what's happening. Have you got to get ready? And they'll sit on the bench and not move. He'll try to warn them of the destruction's coming, the tribulation's coming. All we've got to do is look back and see his coming upon us more and more every day. Yeah, I was worried one time. I got to thinking about how the pastor talked about the president. It don't matter who's going in. It don't make any difference. And you know what really does? I got to thinking about that. It really don't make no difference who goes in. God says it. Terrible times is going to come. It's going to wax worse and worse. So it don't matter who goes in, what's going to happen. God's plan is going to be fulfilled. And I said, well, no matter what president goes in, no matter what happens this election, God's plan is going to be fulfilled. God told him, he, Paul, he's going to Rome. God's plan was going to be fulfilled no matter what man done. And Paul tried to warn him ahead of time. He said, sir, you need to wait. Don't sell right now. This is the worst time of the year to sell. We knew back in the Mediterranean like that, the storms could come up all of a sudden, not knowing it, just catch them by surprise as they go out. We've seen how the pastor talked about it last Sunday night, how the Jesus and the disciples went out on the boat, and he was caught in the boat, boat sleeping in the bottom, and the storm come up all of a sudden. Wasn't no storm when they went out, but the storm come up. We see that happen with Jonah. There wasn't no storm when Jonah sailed, but the storm come up. The same with Jesus and his disciples. When they was fed the multitude, after they got through, Jesus went up in the mountain to pray, and he told his disciples, you get in the boat and go on over, send them to Capernaum. And the storm come up all of a sudden. Well, then storms can rise all of a sudden. We know personally some of us here, Church, we went to Jamaica on a mission trip. Pretty sunshine, everything was just fine when we left out. We got over there and had about two services. They shut the airport down and said, Cindy's going to hit Hurricane Cindy. But I said, Why don't you go home? I said, We couldn't go home. We can't walk on water. Our porch was closed down. We weren't expecting that hurricane to come, but that storm come up all of a sudden. A lot of times in our life, storms come up all of a sudden. We're not expecting what comes up. Sister Judy didn't realize when she was down at that house that she was going to fall at that door and break that shoulder bone. That was just a storm to come up. Brother Dean, he, I know when he went to this surgery, he knew it, they tried to explain to him, but he didn't know what he was going to go through. It was a storm that come up. He's having the faith. One time we... <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Sometimes we have to face these storms, but we can with God. We know as long as he's in control, everything's going to be all right. When you go out and he'll call us out to do something, he's going to be with us. He's not going to send us there in the way. In verse 11, it said, Nevertheless, the centurion believed the masters and the owners of the ship more than those who, which were spoken by Paul. You know, Sometimes man believes man more than what he believes God. Just like that centurion in there, he believed the owners of the ship. He, he believed that you know, they, they can sell it. The pilot says, no matter what storm comes up, everything's going to be all right. You just go ahead and take it. Well, you know, people believe man a lot of times more than they do God. God's got his word out there for us to read on and that we to study. He gives us directions to everything. But yet man won't read that. But another man said, well, that's a, all right, you can do that. These old people didn't know no better. That's the reason they done this. So that's the reason they done that. See, <clears throat> but when you got it there, the word, you got the direction, that's what you need to go by. You can look back enough. I think enough the directions in the word of God. 
sitting there in black and white for us to read? Well, I'm like a lot of you men. You might deny it, but a lot of times we don't read the directions. We look at the pictures. And if the picture looks right, we'll jump on it, you know. <coughs> but, but it's not like that with God's Word. There's not no pictures there. We had to get in there and study the Word of God. Don't take man. A lot of times man today that says, well, you can't do that. That was for them back then. That's not for us today. But my God said, I never change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just like these people that wouldn't listen to Paul, even though when Paul had divine guidance, telling him, God telling him, you're going to go to Rome, letting him know how scary it could be at this time of year, the storms are coming up. Maybe they didn't realize how much Paul had probably been on the water already. He might have been sailing as much as they was, because he was always on that mission trip. You can read over and over, Paul sailed here, Paul sailed there, or where he walked. Paul was a man of God that listened to God, what God said. And though he set up there and he told him, yeah, he said, I see much damage coming from this storm. No, we can make it. We can do it, Paul. They wouldn't take Paul's word for it. He said they left on out. They went on in verse 13. It said, when the south wind blew softly, supposing they had attained their purpose, loosened the sense, they fell close to Crete. You know, even though they left out, Selling, everything was going good. Had the south wind blowing, so it's just a soft wind. Might have had said to sail slowly, so I figured they probably had a head wind on there, kind of holding them back. But they was they made the creed that sail close to shore so they could get in. Everything was looking good for them. They said, "Well, we making it. Paul's wrong. That's not going to be like Paul said. Everything's going real smooth." It said they sell close to Creed. But I thought about that. A lot of people walk close to church, but they're not really in it. They want you to think you know, they're serving God, living for God, but they're not really His. They're just walking close. Walking close is not good enough. We have to be on board that vessel of God. One day He's going to say, all aboard, and He's going to make that trip. He's not going to wait. I've been on several cruises, and they'll sit there and they'll tell you this ship's going to sail at 4 o'clock. If you're not on board at 4 o'clock, we leave without you. You can get home the best way you can. And they will sail. They won't wait on you. And that's what's going to be that day. He's not going to wait on us to get right. We have to be right today. Get on board that ship. Get on that vessel and be ready and be prayed up. Don't just be walking close to him. I don't remember, it was Brother, Brother Steve said, don't be getting ready to be ready. We may not have time to be getting ready. And he blows that, that trumpet sound, we better be ready. But we see they struck out on this ship. They were close and said in verse 14, but not long after arose against it a tempest called Eurachodon. You know, this is the only word time Eurachodon is used in the New Testament. We don't see it nowhere else. And I got to look into the commentary if I want to find out exactly what it was. And there wasn't a whole lot known about you, Rockadon. Just all of them had to speculate. They said it could be like a hurricane blowing, a typhoon. And you know, if the hurricane comes up, if you see it, I know everybody's probably seen on TV the eye of the hurricane and different things which look like it's spinning around. Well, that's the way they said the ship was. Paul was on this ship, and the wind was a blowing. Said it would blow from the west, it would blow from the right, it would blow from the front, it blow from the back. First thing is, they didn't know which way the wind was going. Didn't know what was going on. That ship would go this way, it'd go that way. It was constantly being moved around by the weather. It wasn't just a tail wind or a head wind. And I know Brother Branson could tell you right now. It don't take but two or three mile an hour wind to move you. You look and set that compass. Uh, I'm going to run 120 degrees, and I'm going to be right here at this airport in an hour. But you've got to figure if that wind, if it ain't in that air, when you get to look at that airport, it ain't there. You just that moved that plane over. That's where that boat was. That wind blowing, it was a moving them. They didn't know where they was going or what they was doing. This went on for 14 days, it says. 
He says in verse 20, it says, when the sun, when neither the sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no tempest was laid on us, all hope that we were saved was then taken away. You know, they guided by the sun and the stars at that time and the moon. They didn't have our modern day instruments. They didn't have that GPS that they could punch in and say, hey, we, we're going to go to Rome and just sit back and let the ship go. They had to sail by what was out there that they could see. They could see the stars. They could see the moon. But for 14 days, there was no star. There was no moon. All they knew was that ship was tossed left. It was right. They didn't know where they was at. If you've ever been out on the ocean like that, and I know some of you have, you get out in the middle of that ocean, you look left, right, front, back. You don't see nothing but water. You don't know where you at. If all of a sudden they say you're going to have to swim the shore, you say, where's shore? I don't know which way to start out. And it amazes that's what they was run into. They didn't know where they was at. All hope was lost. We right here in the middle of the sea, and we don't know which way land is. We don't know which way we need to sail, which way to go home, which way to go this way, or what, what to do. It, it always amazes me, you know, how people could drive them ships. Or they probably think the same thing about uh, Ransom used airplane when he was up there. But years ago, when I was a young man, I'm old, old man right now, but when I was a young man, I used to dive, scuba dive. We get on that boat, and we might go out 45 miles, 35 miles. That boat would stop and drop anchor, and they said, we're right over a shipwreck if y'all want to go down and see it. So we'd jump over. But it always amazed me, how in the middle of the ocean, he knows that ship's down there. But it's direction. They know they got that compass. They can follow the direction and get there. If they was out there in the middle of a storm, they couldn't say that. They wouldn't know which way to go. That's the way these people was. They didn't know which, where they was at, which way to sail for land, which way they had to go. They said all hope was lost. They, they didn't know which way. You know, the pastor preached that one day on hope. That's the one thing we can't lose, that hope. As long as we got hope, we can make it just fine. As long as we got hope, everything's going to be all right. We can put our hope in God and know that everything's going to be all right. He's with us. In verse 21, I won't read verse 21, 22, but he said, after a long absence, that was our fasting for 14 days, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sir, you have hearkened unto me, and not you should have hearkened to me and not loosed from creed. You have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of man's life among you but to the ship. After 14 days of fasting, and you know, these was not all Christian people. So I thought a bunch of this fast was probably seasick. If you've ever been out of the boat, a bunch of people get seasick out there. That boat will twist in this way and that up and down. First thing you know, everybody's sick. So. That fast, a lot of it probably wasn't on purpose, but for 14 days, these people hadn't eaten nothing. All they had done was fought this storm to all hope was lost. And all of a sudden, here Paul stands up a bunker, says, be of good cheer. Boy, it's hard to tell a man when he's sick and hadn't eaten for 14 days to be good cheer. We're lost. We've lost all hope. And the man said, be of good cheer. But Paul knew that God had talked to him. He had faith in God. If God told him he was going to Rome, he was going to Rome. He wasn't going to be lost at sea. God had a plan for his life. God's got a plan for each one of our lives. If we'll just hold on to him, he'll bring us through. And Paul says, for, for there stood by me this night an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. You know, the thing about this angel standing with Paul, even though Paul didn't know where he was at, that ship captain didn't know where he was at. Nobody, they thought they was all lost. God knows where he was at. God sent that angel to him. He said, I was lost, but that angel found Paul where he was at. No matter who we at, you know, sometimes you think, well, you're, God don't know, God don't see, but God got that all seeing eye. He knows exactly where we at, what we're doing, where we're going. You know, it makes me sometimes he says, 
He even knows our thoughts before we're thinking. Knows our words before we're speaking. It's amazing. Just that God knows exactly where Paul's at. And Paul was not ashamed of God. He might have been the only Christian on that ship. But Paul, he said, whose I am and whose I serve. He was not ashamed of God. He stood up. We can't be ashamed of God where we at. We might be the only Christian where we work. We might be the only Christian in the bunch. But still, if we'll go forth and let our light shine before them, don't be ashamed of God. He said, if you're ashamed of me, I'd be ashamed of you for the Father. Let your light shine. And it's just like lighting that match in a dark room. That one light's going to match, going to show a little bit of light. If you're a child of God, that light's going to shine forth to touch others. They're going to see that light in your life. And Paul was not ashamed of Jesus Christ. You know, I don't want to be ashamed of him. I want to be able to hear, well done, not depart from me because the Father, because I've been ashamed of him. I don't want to be ashamed of me before the Father. But this angel t- was talking to Paul and said, Fear not, Paul, for thou shalt be brought before Caesar. And, Lord, God has given thee the, them that sail with thee. You know, one of the commentators, I'm not sure exactly which, what was a Sunday school, I leave, read a bunch of them, I read these lessons. But it said there's 276 men on that ship. Because of the faith of one man, the prayers of one man, 276 men were saved. Because he told them, he said, you're going to Rome. The ship's going to be lost, but not one soul in this ship is going to be lost. After all these people thought they was dying in the middle of the ocean, didn't know which way they was going, where they at, that had to be something to cheer them up. I thought about when all this storm coming up, and all of them are sick, they had lost all hope, and Paul said, be a good cheer. I said, man, how can you cheer up in a time like that, you know? How can you smile and be happy about it? But Paul knew God had told him, and he had his faith in Paul. And God told him, he said, not one on this ship's going to be lost. Because of your faith, you know, we're going to go with you. You know, as these people went forth trying to roll that ship, trying to get that ship into port and to land, they were doing all the work they could do. But Paul was doing what he could do too. He was down on his knees to pray. He was praying for the ship. He was praying for the souls that was on it. Lord, give me the life of these people sailing with me. Look over us and keep us safe. You know, you never know. How a child of God, what he's praying for, and what he's doing, how his, his prayers is going to affect your life, how they affect the world. I thought several times in my younger years, and I said, you know, I should have been killed or anything out there, but I know I had a praying mom at home praying for me. I wasn't saved. I was living for the world, but I knew somebody was praying for me. I didn't at that time. I might have thought she was praying for me, just pushed it out the door. But I look back on my life and see what I had, different things that come along. And I, you know, they hadn't have been praying for me at this time. That could have been the end. I may not have been here today. But because of those prayers, God helped me, God kept me, and God brought me here today. That's what it was for them. They thought all hope was lost. We're going down with the ship. There's no way we can get through. But because of Paul being on his knees praying and seeking for their life and for his life and the life of that ship, he said he saved 276 men. He told them, we're for serve, be of good cheer, for I believe God. And it shall be even as he has told me, how be it we must cast upon a certain idol. You know, we can believe God no matter what he says. Man will deceive you. Man will lead you astray. But God will never lead you astray. If you don't know, pick up the Word of God and read and study the Word of God. Don't just read it. Study it. See what he says to us. You know, I've read it a lot, and I've said it before in Sunday school. A lot of times when you're just reading it, you get through, you couldn't take a test on it because you, you've read it, but you haven't really studied, comprehended what you read. You need to study the Word of God. That's why he says study that shows thyself to prove. I don't want to be able to stand up and say I don't know or I didn't know. He gave us the word of God. We need to study that word. 
It's us men, we can't look at pictures, but we can read it. We can read the directions. I told him, I said, I'm a little slow about reading directions. I said, get, get older, you don't understand quite as good. I said, now I read it, and I read it, and I read it, trying to understand it. I said, when I was young, I read, and it seemed like I understood what I read. Not anymore. I don't comprehend. But we need to study the Word of God. Don't depend on man to tell us. Get in there and study, because man can lead you astray. You know, a lot of times I think that people say, well, let the preacher study. He, he goes over here every day at church and studies. And prays. He can study it for me. But God tells us to study. He don't say, let the preacher study. He says, study to show thyself approved. We have to study before God. Read his word. Draw thy hand. God will lead us through. You know, I told Sister Blanche yesterday, I said, this is a to be continued lesson. God told Paul, or the angel told Paul, he said, you're going to land on an island. He didn't tell Paul the name of the island. And the day's lesson dropped us off right there on the island. We just stopped. I told Sister Blanche last night, I said, it's going to be continued. I said, next Sunday, Sister Amy's going to get us on the island and take us on through. But I said, this year, if I said, I got the shipwreck and she got to deliver us. <laughs> so, pray. Let's keep putting and drawing closer to God. And pray for Sister Amy next Sunday that she'll get us off that island. Okay? All right. Appreciate your attention today. Let's go, Steve.
Church of God, so good to see you in God's house today. I enjoyed that Sunday school lesson this morning. It kind of reminded me of my days when I was in the Navy. Uh, I was on an aircraft carrier with about 5,000 men. We got in some rough seas in the North Atlantic, and it tossed that aircraft carrier, which is like a small city, it tossed it like it was a matchbox out there on the ocean. So I can imagine what Paul went through when they was on that, on that ship. Uh, but God took care of me, and he, just like he took care of Paul, he took care of me. Uh, good to have Brother Vish with us today. Good to uh, just take your liberty in the Lord. Uh, good to have Brother Dean back. Uh, he's recovering from surgery. It just blessed my heart when I seen him come in back there. And we continue to pray for him that God will just completely heal him from that uh, surgery. Praise God. Good to have uh, Brother Zach and Sister Tina back from vacation. Missed them. Good to have them back today. Praise God. You know, I want to say this Memorial Day weekend, let us not remember those who have gave their life in service for our country. We're not free. Freedom's not free. Someone paid a cost. Just like Jesus Christ, he paid the price for our salvation with his blood on the cross of Calvary. Well, just like our nation, the reason we can be assembled here today is because uh, men and women have fought and given their lives that we might have this freedom. So let's not take it for granted. Praise God. Okay, uh, we'll have Brother Eddie come at this time and lead us in prayer. in God's house this morning. Uh, got a little praise report for myself, if I can hold it together. <laughs> uh, Friday I had an accident. My car had side swiped me in my big truck, and uh, God kept me safe. You know, I thank him for it, and, and I thank him for keeping another guy safe too. And uh, I just praise him and thank him. You know, he, every day out there is dangerous, and, uh, and he keeps me. I thank him for it. Um, let's um, continue praying for brother and sister Ball, uh, sister Sandra and sister Sarah and her children, um, sister Angela and sister Betty, um, James Green, Charles Chisholm, Peggy Massey, Joanne Sanders, Peggy Fogelman, Vivian Parks, Mary Gibson, Nancy, Nancy Kearns, Norma Hoover, uh, Brooklyn McGee, uh, also, let's pray for little uh, Gracie Bradless, uh, Jane Felicia's little daughter. Um, continue to pray for Brother Sam, uh, Brother Tim Julian. Uh, Sister Ashley had turned in a request for, for Mila. Uh, and also a little boy named Matthew Stoker. He's like seven or eight years old, and he's been diagnosed with cancer. And all these need healing in their bodies. Um, <clears throat> let's pray for God to give a speedy recovery to Brother Dean, Sister Judy, and uh, Brother James, and uh, let's continue to pray for Sam Lamb, Lawson Ferguson, Arnold Spencer, Mark Aiken, and Michael Duncan. They need healing and salvation. Um, let's pray for uh, Kevin Steelman. He needs salvation. And uh, uh, let's pray for uh, Aaron's situation and Nathan and Brianna. They need prayer. And uh, as always, let's pray for the youth from our church. Uh, Haley, Harper, Aaron, Jalen, Selena, and Tyranny. I pray they'll find their way back to God. Uh, does anybody else have a prayer request? All right, let's remember Rebecca Harris in prayer. Remember the uh, families of the missionaries that was killed in Haiti this week. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He'll do it. We've got to love him. I mean, he's... <laughs> He sure takes care of us. Amen. Anybody else?
Yeah. Right. Right. Well, let's remember Sister Blanche's son uh, and uh, his co-workers as uh, they deal with this uh, shutdown and uh, pray for his salvation also. Anybody else? Okay, let's remember those. Anybody else? Pray for the upcoming revival, Brother John. Yes, yes sir. Pray for Amen. Pray for the revival. Amen. Nobody else? Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, and love you and praise you, God, for everything you do, Lord. Lord, I thank you for keeping me safe, Lord. Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to have your way in this service today, God. Lord, let the Holy Ghost have his way today, Lord. I love you and praise you and give you all the honor and the glory, God. Lord, I just love you and thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. I ask you, Lord, to touch brother and sister ball today, God. Strengthen their bodies, Lord. Help them, God. God, I just ask you to uh, touch Donna today, God. Just heal her body, Lord. Lord, it's uh, working her job situation, Lord. God, I ask you to touch brother Sam today. Heal his body, Lord. Uh, God, I ask you to touch uh, brother Dean, Lord. Sister Judy and, and, and James, God, that you would just heal their bodies, God. And keep them complete healing, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to touch uh, Sister Darlene's husband, God. Uh, save his soul, Lord. Save Sister Sarah's children, God. Save my children, God. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to touch Brother Branson's mother, Rebecca, God. Heal her body, Lord. And touch this little boy that's got cancer, God. Little Matthew, God. Just, that you would just heal his little body, God. Lord, touch little Mila, Lord. Heal her body, God. Help her today, Lord. Gain weight, Lord. Blanche's son, God, if you would help him, Lord, find another job, God, uh, pray for help you to help all the people that would, uh, uh, have to have another job because of this shutdown, God. Lord, we just ask you to touch Sister Sandra today, Lord, to heal her body completely, God. And Lord, we just thank you, love you, and praise you for everything you do, Lord. Lord, I ask you to uh, move in uh, Sister Bl uh, Audrey's request, God. God, let us continue to worship as the choir comes at this time and minister in song. Good to have Sister Sandra get back again this morning. Just thrilled my heart. Brother Sister Ball, good to have him back. Just that they, they doing well. And Sister Sarah and Brother Benny, all of these, Lord, that sometimes that the, the old enemy will try to keep us out with our health, but we know that God is on our side.
he set me free. Have you been set free today? Praise God. If you're watching online, if you haven't been set free, you can be today. If you're in this congregation, I don't know who people's heart. I think everybody here is saved, but I don't know. God knows, but he can set us free. Praise God. And whom the Son set free is free indeed. Praise God. Let's continue worshiping, giving, and get our usher to come and receive a tithe and offering. Brother Zach, would you pray with us time of worship? Blessed for your faithfulness and giving. Praise God. Sister Melissa, you might as well walk on up here because Sister Melissa had a birthday this past week. We want to sing happy birthday. Anybody else have a birthday this past week? We want to sing to you. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Let us stand and sing happy birthday to Sister Melissa this morning. Any anniversary since last Sunday? Praise the Lord. Yep, five dollars drawing. I want to speak on just be holy, holy. B W H O L L Y H O L Y. Holy, holy. Inside, outside. Be holy, holy, holy. You know, so we want to be holy, holy. First Peter, first, uh, first Peter 1 15, 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, all manner of conduct. We want to be holy. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. 2 Peter 3, 10 and 11 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you ought to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Be holy, holy. That's what we've got to strive that every day be as holy as we can be. You know, we can draw closer. Every day we can draw closer to God. I can go, go closer to God every day. A person said they can't. Uh, that means you've already attained. I don't think none of us attained it yet to heaven yet. Praise God. Let's continue to worship. Sister Amy, Sister Harris, and Sister Brady come to minister in song.
He is great and greatly to praise. Let's just lift our hands and worship to him right now. Lord, we just worship and praise your holy name. Lord God, you are great and worthy to be praised, Lord God. Thank you and praise you for all your bountiful blessings, for everything you have done, everything you're going to do, Lord God. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. This time of turn service to our pastor, Brother Shelton. Amen. Go ahead and give him praise this morning. He is great. Amen. That song says there is no one like you. Amen. There's never been, never will be another God. He is the one true living God. Can you say praise the Lord? Appreciate the good spirit I feel here in this house this morning. Appreciate the love of God that I feel when I come in here. Appreciate the spirit of God that I feel when I come in here. Amen. It's a joy to be in God's house. Good to see all of you here today. Good to have Brother uh, Zach and Sistina back from the trip. Glad God give them traveling grace. 
It's good to see Brother Dean back there. We want to thank God for that. He's been through a, a, a tough time, but the Lord's good. As Brother Dean would say in text, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. Good to see Brother James back there. Appreciate him being here this morning. He's been through a procedure, some surgery, and I'm glad for the goodness of God, aren't you? I'm glad God's a good keeping God. Saved by his grace and kept by his grace. Listen to me. The Lord spoke this to my heart this morning. I know he did. There's a million things that want to pull you away from church, but there's one thing that will keep you, and it's Jesus. A million things want to pull you away from church, but the one thing that will keep you is Jesus Christ. If you'll stay with him, I thought about all those graduates yesterday over there, and uh, you know that the, the lady that gave the commencement speech done a wonderful job. I really thoroughly enjoyed that, and she encouraged them to serve the Lord and, and live for God and follow the Lord, and uh, there's a lot of things going to be trying to pull at those graduates now, trying to pull them this way and that way and that way and this way, but the one thing that will keep them steadfast is Jesus Christ. They'll walk with Jesus. Somebody said, well... That's just the trend today. We're watching the young people grow up in church and get out. That don't have to be the trend. They'll walk with Jesus just like I have to walk with Jesus, just like you have to walk with Jesus. They'll walk with Jesus. They'll stay in church and they'll serve God. They won't have to go on Brother Eddie's list to pray for them and they'll get back right with God. Amen. If you walk with Jesus, you're going to make it. Can you say praise the Lord? It's good to have Bish. All right, Bish, thank you for being here this morning. He's been with us before. Give him a good hand of appreciation. Good to see Sister Darlene back. We missed her. She's been sick. When you're not here, you're missed. And uh, so we're glad all of you is here. Very quickly, I'm going to preach in just a little while. We've got plenty of time here. A couple things here. Um, Josiah's going to come. Come on, Josiah. Also, I got, a, I got an email this week I want to share with you uh, just, the, uh, just the gist of it. They are needy and looking for volunteers uh, for the Meals on Wheels at the Asheboro uh, Senior Center, the Randolph Seniors Adult Association. Uh, they're looking for folks that can volunteer some time, uh, weekly, once a month, uh, that will be able to go out and deliver food to people that are shut in. And uh, so I'm going to put that on the bulletin board when we get a little room back there. And uh, if anybody wants to volunteer, come see me. We'll get you all the information, who to contact there. And uh, I've helped with this before, but I've done this with my in-laws, my father-in-law before. And it's a wonderful ministry that you get to meet new people. And uh, the folks we met were just so kind and so nice. So if you're interested, you've got some time and want to do that, then pray about that, and uh, it'll be a help to somebody. Amen? Praise God. All right. Josiah graduated yesterday. I can't believe he's already 18 years old. Talking about when he was a little boy.
Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, let's stand for the reading of the Word of the Lord this morning. Appreciate this Memorial Day weekend. Brother Charlie's already alluded to it. We do want to remember and honor all those who have sacrificed and give their lives so that you and I can be right here this morning. Amen. Uh, it bothers me to know in. I don't know if they do it anymore or not. I don't watch the news. I don't keep up with football. I just don't watch those things. And But it bothered me to know in uh, when those men would not respect and honor that flag of the United States of America. It's more than just a flag blowing the wind. It represents the freedom we have in this country. It also represents the lives that have been lost and given freely, freely, so that you and I can have the freedom and the liberty to stand in this sanctuary this morning. We can carry our Bibles with us. We can pray. They say you can't pray in school, but you can. You can pray over your meal. You can pray that. Yes, sir, you can pray. And uh, I just want to honor all those who gave their lives for our freedom. And certainly the greatest life given was Jesus. doesn't matter if you're in a communist country or a free country. Jesus, through him, you can be free. Amen? I appreciate all the sacrifice. I, I'm just so thankful and uh, honored, honored that men, you know, those men, even our law enforcement, our first responders, the EMT, firefighters, I know we're not, we're, even though this is not about them, but in a way it is, those firefighters gave their lives and police officers give their lives for us, for our protection. They're the folks that run in when everybody else runs out. And uh, so we need to pray for them, lift them up. Our military, we need to pray for those men and women uh, that are out there on those front lines every day uh, for the freedom we are able to celebrate here. We take that for granted, I think. We, ju we just have it. We're used to it. But uh, I'm glad we set aside time to remember them and those who have paid that ultimate sacrifice for us. Mark chapter 5 this morning. And we want to begin reading in verse 1 today. I just I thoroughly enjoyed that graduation yesterday, uh, hearing them talk about Jesus and and serving the Lord and being steadfast. I mean that's that's you know that's special. Those young people don't don't even understand how special that is to be able to hear that. But uh, I hope they'll take that to heart and uh, they'll serve the Lord. Amen. Mark chapter five, begin reading in verse one. Bible says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, speaking of Jesus, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters, as shackles, and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. The Amplified says he was bruising himself and cutting himself. He was abusing himself, his own body, with these stones because of the torment that he was dealing with. Verse 6 says, But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I assure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, this is Jesus speaking to this devil inside this man, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. They that fed the swine fled, told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil 
and had the legion set him and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devils and also concerning the swine. They began to pray him to depart out of their coast. They were more concerned about their livestock than they were this man's life. Amen. And when he was come into the ship, Jesus again, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Will you stretch your hands this way? Ask the Lord to help us for the next little while. Father, thank you. We're glad to be in your house this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful congregation, all those that's been able to come out to be in this sanctuary today. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be able to stand here behind this holy desk on this holy sacred ground this morning and to be able to preach from your holy word. I pray, God, you'll touch us for the next little while. Anoint us. I pray, God, that you'll lay your hand on me, God, and let it be effective preaching, Jesus. I pray you'll anoint the ears to hear the word of God and receive it with gladness today. I pray that you'll do a divine work in these altars this morning. I pray that you'll move upon us, you'll breathe upon us. I pray that you'll break chains and shackles in this house today. Loose people, let them go free, dear Lord. Thank you for the power of the blood, the power of your name, Jesus. At your name, devils tremble and they believe, Lord. I pray, God, that you'll do a work in this house that when we leave here, we can say it had to be the Lord. It had to be God. Father, I just love you and praise you and thank you for it all. In your mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. Would you give him one more hand of appreciation as you're seated. To praise the Lord. Amen. I want to preach to you just for a little while this morning. This thought is God has laid upon our heart, the master of slavery, the master of slavery. This is a very familiar story. We're just going to kind of cover it uh, to get to the main point we want to reach here. But I do want to uh, certainly lay a foundation for you concerning this, this poor man that we read about here in Mark chapter 5. Here we find the story of a man uh, in Gadara who was possessed with an unclean spirit. Bible says of this man, the Bible gives us a little biography here of this gentleman's life. Bible said that he had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not with chains. I read this story again last evening and read it again this morning. And verse 5 just jumped out at me here last evening, I guess it was. The Bible says, and always, night and day. It's hard to imagine the torment this man was in. The Bible says always, night and day. This man never got any relief. You know, there's people who deal with problems today, but we do get moments and times and glimpses of relief in our life. There's folks who deal with sickness, but they go to church and God touches them and they feel better. There's folks who deal with anxiety, but they get touched by God and they get relief uh, some permanently, some for a while. But the Bible says this man never got any relief. Always, night and day, he was in the mountains, and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself uh, with stones. This demon-possessed man is in the worst kind of ways. He's in the worst kind of shape. His was certainly a desperate situation. You know, the worst part of it was he was unable to do anything to help himself. There was nothing he could do to bring any relief. He was so desperate that he turned to, to abusing his own body, abusing himself, trying to get some kind of comforts, trying to get some kind of release uh, from the pain that he's in. Not only is he unable to help himself, uh, but the people around him, surely there's people around him that loved him, uh, they were powerless to help him as well. 
And the Bible tells us why. This man was held fast in the grip of demonic possession. Satan is literally the master of his life. This man is in spiritual bondage. He's a slave to sin. He's a slave to the devil. From the human perspective, when we look at this man's life, uh, this man was completely hopeless. There was nothing to help him. Uh, there was nobody to help him. No medicine could cure this man. There was no doctor that could prescribe enough medicine to help him uh, in his condition. No psychologist, no psychiatrist uh, could sit down and talk with him and reason with him and talk him out uh, of what it was he's dealing with. This man lived in isolation. He lived in torment and desperation uh, always, night and day. His only companions are the dead bodies in the cemetery uh, and the devils that dwelt within him. Verses 3 and 4 tell us uh, that he had his living there among the tombs. Amen. This tells us that he dwelt among the dead. Those demons that possessed him, those demons that drove him, uh, they drove him far away from the living. They drove him away from his family. They drove him away from his loved ones. They drove him away from his friends. Anybody that cared about him, uh, anybody that wanted to help him, uh, those devils drove him far away from them, uh, and he spent his life in the cemetery. I've told you before, in those days, people were not usually buried in the ground, uh, amen, but tombs were carved in the hillsides, uh, and bodies were placed in there. But because of this demonic possession, uh, this man spent his time with the, the bones and the decaying corpses of the dead. Each and every day, the devil was literally, we read the story, uh, and we can literally see the devil stealing uh, and killing and destroying this man's life. And then the Bible tells us in verse 4, that there are people around him, maybe family, we don't know, uh, but people around him that cared about him, uh, that, that wanted to see him free from his condition. They tried to restrain him. They tried to help him. They would catch him and they would bind him, the Bible says, uh, with fetters and with chains. The fetters, these were shackles. Uh, they would have been placed on his feet and the, the chains would have bound his arms and his hands uh, and wrapped tight around his torso. They bound him surely to keep him from hurting himself, uh, probably to keep him from hurting other people as well. But the Bible shows us that all of these man-made devices uh, all of these man-made efforts uh, could not hold this man uh, and could not help this man. The Amplified says he would wrench apart the chains and the shackles. He would rub and grind them together uh, and break them in pieces. What I'm telling you is this. Uh, every human effort uh, failed to set this man free. Then the Bible tells us why in verse 9. The Bible tells us that he has an unclean spirit. This man's not just the home to one foul, unclean spirit, but he's possessed by a legion of demons. A legion in that Roman army could have been as many as 2,000 to 6,000 soldiers. So this man here was host to thousands of evil spirits. It's hard to even wrap your mind around that. But that man was literally full of the devil. This man was completely under the power and control uh, of the devil with no hope of deliverance. He was a slave to Satan. Satan was the master of his life, uh, and nobody can help him change. Nobody can do anything for him. The Bible said this is how he lived always, day and night. Oh, but I'm glad that's not the end of the message today. Uh, I'm glad that's not the end of the story here in Mark chapter 5. Uh, but the Bible tells us uh, something wonderful is about to happen to this man uh, who is a slave to the devil. Uh, 
something magic, um, something marvelous rather is about to happen uh, to this man who is controlled uh, by Satan himself, uh, full of the devil. Uh, the Bible shows us uh, he's about to meet the master of slavery. Uh, he's about to meet a man named Jesus Christ. Uh, and the Bible said when Jesus uh, walked into this hopeless case, uh, I'm telling you nobody else could help this man. There was not enough medicine. Uh, there was not enough men. Uh, there was not enough doctors uh, to help this man out of his condition. Uh, but one man named Jesus Christ uh, has the power uh, and will show up in his life. Uh, and when he shows up, uh, everything's going to change uh, for this man. Can you lift your hands and give God praise uh, in this house today? Hallelujah to God. Jesus shows up. <laughs> Woo. When Jesus shows up, everything is going to change. When Jesus comes into a life, everything is going to change. You listen to me, friend. Uh, you can be a, a slaver to sin all of your life. I've heard of people who lived their whole lives bound up in sin, uh, but then before they died, Jesus walked into their life. I've heard of people being bound by everything you can imagine uh, and things you can't even imagine. Uh, but then Jesus showed up. Uh, and when Jesus showed up, uh, I can tell you, friend, the chains were broken, the shackles uh, fell off, uh, and he changes everything in that life. Uh, if Jesus ever comes in, uh, everything about you is going to change. Uh, somebody said, well, how will I know uh, if I get saved? Uh, I'm telling you, if Jesus saves you, uh, you're going to be a brand new creation. Uh, if Jesus comes into your heart, uh, amen, you're not going to be what you used to be. Uh, he's going to make a, I'm glad uh, that he made a change uh, in my life. I'm glad uh, I'm not what I used to be. Hallelujah to God. I feel him in this house today. Bible tells us when this man arrived, when Jesus arrived and this man saw him, this man who had run from everybody else, who was driven from his family, isolated, desperate, uh, in a terrible place. Uh, he run from everybody else, but when Jesus shows up, uh, the Bible said he ran from the tombs uh, and he ran to where Jesus was uh, and he fell down at his feet. Uh, I'm telling you, I don't know how old this man was. The Bible doesn't tell us. Uh, but what we do know, uh, he's been in bondage all this time. Uh, nobody can help him. Uh, but Jesus did for him uh, what nobody else could do. Uh, on that day, Jesus set him free. Uh, Jesus didn't bind him up uh, like others had. Uh, but Jesus loosed the chains and the shackles. Uh, Jesus opened the prison door uh, and let that man walk out free. Uh, I'm telling you, Jesus uh, is still in the life-changing business. Uh, somebody said, well, Brother Shelton, uh, you don't know what they're bound by. You don't know how long it's had a grip on their heart. Uh, does it matter if they've been bound by it all their life? Uh, when Jesus shows up, uh, he's a life changer. Uh, I said he's a life changer. Uh, he'll make a difference uh, in your life. Somebody give him praise here this morning. <laughs> Woo! Ah, blessed Lord. Jesus set him free. Verse 8, the Bible said, For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Every attempt by humans had failed to deliver this poor soul from bondage. Everything that they tried to help him regain his grip on his own sanity had proven useless. But one word from Jesus. How many know, my friend, that his word is powerful? One word from Jesus, and he was set free. The choir sang about it this morning. He set me free. He set me free. I believe this man, if he was here today, he could have got up off that pew, 
walked up in this choir uh, and knew exactly what he was singing about, uh, meant what he was singing about. Uh, I'm free uh, because of Jesus Christ. Uh, he's no longer in slavery, uh, no longer a slave to the devil, uh, no longer beckoning to the call uh, of the demons inside of him. Uh, he's no longer bound by sin, uh, but just one word from the master uh, and he loosed him uh, and he let him go free uh, and the Lord uh, can still do the same thing here today. Jesus still sets free. Sin may have a firm hold on your life, but I have the power to set you free, saith the Lord. You may be bound in this grip, but I've got the power to loosen that grip and let you go free, saith the Lord. I have the power through my word to release you from your bondage and your spiritual prison. Trust in my word. Kneel before me. Repent of your sin, and I will let you go free, saith the Lord. Put your hands and honor the Holy Ghost today, saints of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Now the Bible said he's clothed in his right mind. Amen. He's a free man. Uh, the Bible shows us here. Uh, he was able to break the chains that men put on him, but he could not break the chains that the devil put on him. I said men tried to shackle him and chain him, uh, but he had break those. Uh, but he could not, no matter how hard he tried, uh, he could not break the chains uh, and the shackles that the devil uh, had placed upon him. Uh, he was a slave to the devil, uh, but Jesus breaks chains. Uh, I said Jesus breaks chains, uh, and Jesus sets slaves uh, free. Can you nod your head uh, and say amen this morning? Uh, if it was not so, uh, I could be here today. Brother Zach if it was not so you wouldn't be a preacher today. Some of you have been bound by anything and everything that you couldn't break free from on your own. Some of you may be bound this morning but I got good news for you. Jesus is alive and well. He's still looking for those in bondage and if you'll come to him he'll break the chains and he will let you go free. Believe my word, saith the Lord. Trust in my word. My word will not fail you. I will not fail you. Trust in me and I will let you go free. I will loose you today, saith the Lord. Lift your hearts and your hands and glorify the Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Stand all over this house if you're able and worship him. The Holy Ghost is in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's a chain breaker. He sets men and women and boys and girls free from the slavery of sin. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, 
You cannot set yourself free. You do not have the key to open the door. But I gave my life. I laid my life down for you. And I rose again on the third day. And I have the key to open the prison that you're in. I can set you free, saith the Lord. You can't set yourself free. You don't have the key. But I have the key of death, hell, and the grave. And I will let you go free if you come to me, saith the Lord. Praise him in this house this morning. These orders are open. If you're in bondage of any kind, saint or sinner, if you're in bondage, he's the master of slavery. In other words, he's got the power to set you free today. And I want you to get in these orders right now. If you're here and you're in bondage, you're, you're, you're enslaved, I want you to come right now. And I want you to get in these orders, and I want you to let Jesus help you this morning. You can't get out on your own. You already heard what the Holy Ghost said to us. You can't get out on your own. You can't get free on your own. Try as you like. You cannot get free on your own. You've got to want to be free. If you don't, you'll remain in that condition. But if you want to be free, Jesus is here to unlock the door today. Jesus is here to loose the shackles that have us bound Jesus is here to break the chains of bondage and slavery. Amen. You can't get out on your own, but you can through Jesus Christ. He's got the power to loose you. Amen. If you don't, you're going to continue in slavery to sin. But if you'll come to Jesus right now, I'm telling you, friend, he'll let you go free. You'll leave here different than the way you come in. You'll leave here changed by the word and the power of God. God. Woo! Will you come this morning? If you're tired of being in bondage, come on right now. Come on right now. If you're tired of being enslaved, come on right now. Hurry, 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 hurry. Somebody get out of your pew and get down these orders. Listen, I didn't just preach this message just to hear myself preach. And surely the Holy Ghost didn't give these messages out just to pass the time. There's people in this house that need to be free today. And if you come to these orders, God's going to set you free. I said the Lord's going to set you free. Amen. You can't do it yourself. Try as you might. This man tried everything he could, but he couldn't get free. His family wanted to help him, but he couldn't get free but Jesus showed up and Jesus did the work and Jesus whether you know it or not he's in this house today through his spirit and he'll break the shackles he'll
Jesus, I've got him. 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 Jesus, he's a lily of the valley. And the bright morning star, he's a sweet rose of Sharon. And the gray. I've got King Jesus. Long as I've got King Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the 